ցուցյան եւ ծանր բահերին քեզեմ հիշում դույն վահանես իսկ ես քովեկան հաթանակի Good afternoon. It's good to be here with you today to share these few moments together. Let's begin as we always do by proclaiming our faith in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This past week, the Armenian people have been completely horrified, have been outraged and sensed looking at the events that took place in Gumri. In fact, it had international repercussions. because a Russian soldier had gone into a family's house and had completely killed the family. I'm sure you've heard the details of the story. And here on Armenian Christianity today, ours is not to review the, the details of that story, but rather to talk about what is our response as Armenian Christians today? How do we interact with insenseless violence? Uh, we see it every single day. in our own backyards and now when it hits a small town in in Armenia Gumri it's actually the second largest but comparatively relatively speaking to many of the big cities we live in it is a relatively small area i was there just a few months ago in Gumri one of the interesting things that i noticed was the church it stands right in the center of Gumri and next to the church is a large dome that's been placed right in the courtyard when we inquired about the dome so I'm talking about the dome of the church this was the dome that fell during the 1988 earthquake which was spent centered in Spitak very close to Gumri but the church lost its dome and so here it is 25 years later that dome was sitting right next to the church structure to remind people of the difficulties they endured. And yet, one more time again, right now we see that in Gumri, the mourning that is taking place not only affects them, affects all of the people in Armenia, and it affects all of us throughout the world. It was President Putin who picked up the phone and called President Sarkisian expressing his condolences and even offered his assistance. And we see these humanitarian offerings and we see people reacting. But what's important as Armenian Christians today is for us to always be not in a reactive sense but in a proactive sense. What are we doing about violence in this world? Just this past week was the Martin Luther King uh, holiday here in the United States. And this holiday reminds us of a great civil rights leader who was able to implement uh, implement thoughts of nonviolence to bring about change. And it was very interesting because we went out to see the movie Selma which was about uh, Dr. King's work in in that town Selma. But at the same time last weekend as we were watching this there was another movie that premiered called American Sniper. And this one got incredible people going the rec- it hit box office records. People going out and seeing people kill people. And you know, we talk about justified killings and I've shared with you my thoughts about all of this throughout the years. But in a sense when a sniper goes out and he does it in the name of conscience in the name of of uh, of a country to kill off a t- terrorist you know we look at these images and our lives become filled with the idea that violence can combat violence there is an expression that we use here in america it says you fight fire with fire uh, it sounds good but think about it for a moment how do you fight fire i fight fire with water So what does it mean fighting fire with fire? Well, in many times we think that the answer to violence is yet more violence. Dr. King and before Dr. King of course, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said do not resist evil. He says but fight it. He says fight it with your power with the power of conscience. Understand that the power of love is greater than that power of evil. and we see what's taking place in Gumri 
we see an innocent family completely, completely destroyed, an innocent family. And yet we realize that all around us, there are the killing of the innocents. Many times, well, the reason why I shy away from talking about a literal translation of the Bible, because when you look at stories, for instance, like of Noah's Ark, and you say, wow, God destroyed the whole country. This is not reflective of God's love or his compassion. These are stories that explain some kind of truth. So it's very important that we in the religious community, particularly in the Armenian church community, that have seen so much violence, even have seen the ultimate violence in terms of genocide, we understand that the only way that we can combat that evil and that violence is not with yet more violence, but with the strictest power and discipline of love. Dr. King who led the civil rights movement, we see that throughout his teachings, his preachings, his writings, emphasize the importance of us looking deep down inside and finding that essence, that, that quality of love within our lives. There's a very famous uh, saying that he said. He said, I'm glad Jesus told us to love our enemies and not like our enemies because I find it very difficult to like somebody who's trying to kill me, who's trying to kill my children. But the power of love, he says, is at a higher level. It's God's love. And so when we look at stories like this of what happened in Gumri, whether it was the earthquake 25 years ago and which killed over 25,000 innocent people, or the story of these Young, this young family who was taken away just last week. We remember, of course, many multiple stories and we ask ourselves, why do these things take place and how, what is our response to them? In Holy Scripture, we, we find a passage that's very closely related to what happened here. This comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 13. It says, there were some present at the very time when Jesus was speaking, who told Jesus of the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And he said, do you think that those Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered thus? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you will be likewise. Or those 18 upon whose upon whom the tower fell and killed them, do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others who dwell in Jerusalem? I tell you, no, but unless you repent, you will also likewise perish. What Jesus is talking about here is for us to stop looking for answers inside of these senseless acts that happen. You know, people build a tower and that tower will fall. People will go crazy. People will kill people. We see this all around us. Unfortunately, in a small town like Gumri, the repercussions are big, but we see this all the time in our, in, in our uh, communities. In fact, in the sense of war, when you think about families that are all together obliterated because a bomb falls on an apartment building, it's not just one family, it's many families. And we see that in casualties of war, we have many, many episodes like this. It becomes uh, overwhelming to us. And what's important for us to always remember that we are all part of God's servants. We are here to comfort not to look for those answers, because sometimes there are no answers. Many times people say, where was God? God is not a Superman. We gotta get away from that idea that God is somehow standing up in the clouds, waiting for some tragedy to happen, and then swooping down and saying, I'm gonna prevent that tragedy from happening. I'm gonna take a bullet for you. No, that is so opposite of what Christ taught us. Christ told us that God was love. The evangelist St. John says God is love. And Christ, through his teachings, through his life, through his sacrifice, instructed us that this is the ultimate power of love. Where was God when these children, when this young family was killed? He was shedding that first tear. He was crying. 
with all of us. Does that mean he is a powerless God? No, it means just the opposite. It means he has so much power within him, so much compassion that he can move. And he moves who? You and me. For us to look for those answers, not outside of ourselves, but within. One of the great saints said the kingdom should be experienced, not outside. Don't look outside of yourself, the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of God is within. And certainly our Lord Jesus Christ instructs us to look within. When the new man is created, when he says, unless you are born again of water and the spirit, what is he talking about? About putting the old self behind and starting a new life in Christ, a new life in love. And understanding that the answers are not outside of us, but are inside of us. If we believe that Christ is inside of us, then where else are we looking? When we receive the Holy Eucharist, the Holy Communion, we go to church and we celebrate the Divine Liturgy, the Holy Badarak. What does that mean? It means that Christ is in our midst. We either believe it or we don't. If we're not going to believe it, let's stop paying lip service to it. But if we believe that Christ is inside of us, then imagine that. We have that love within inside of us. We have that peace inside of us. And it's up to us to be able to reach out with that love, with that peace, to fight fire, not with fire, but with water. The tragedy that happened in Gumri is beyond our understanding. It doesn't profit us to sit there and say, why, why not? Eventually some court, some kind of legal system, somebody's going to find out why. Is it going to change the situation? Not one iota. The reality is that there are people that are hurting there. There are people all around us that are hurting. It's up to us as Armenian Christians today to reach out. That beautiful expression that we have, tzavatanim, let me take your pain, let me feel your pain, behooves us to reach out in compassion, in care, to people who are suffering. If it happened in Gumri, it happens all around us. It may not be so prolific, it may not be so, so huge in scope, but every death anywhere is touching us in a very unique way. And so when we open up our TVs and when we go out and we see these shoot 'em up movies and we see that and we, we cheer on the American sniper and we fill up these theaters and, and, our, and our game consoles, let's remember that what's happening, that everybody who is dying, every scene that we see of carnage is dehumanizing that human experience. And it's up to us to really understand ourselves as Armenian Christians today, as that one factor that has to be the champion of life, of humanity. You see, Armenians are an incredible people. We've been through so much. We don't have military power. We don't have military strategy. But what we do have is God. We understand that idea of love. Now, You may look around you and you say, I don't see that within the Armenian community. Unfortunately, many times when we talk about our Armenian church and the love that we have through the church, we think about a 2,000-year-old tradition. But you see, when the Turks killed us back 100 years ago, they went right for the jugular vein. They went for the church. They destroyed the church. They destroyed all of that history that went with it, or they thought they did. And it was through those ashes that the first group of clergymen, through prayer, through constant vigilance, came out, constructed the churches, and brought back. And sometimes we get critical of the church that it's not talking the message. But now, a hundred years later, the first generation, the second generation of priests, of parish councils, they opened up. They kept the doors of the Armenian church open. Now it's up to us to fill those Armenian churches, not with just bodies, not with just making the sign of the cross, not with just lighting a candle, but by becoming living ambassadors of Christ. That's what our church fathers demanded of us. When St. Nerses Shnorhali, one of the greatest and most prolific writers, theologians of the Armenian church, 
patriarchs of the Armenian Church, when he writes his prayers, he's asking each and every one of us to be committed to the fullness of Christ, to the love of Christ. And when we understand that, that Christ is living within inside of us, we cannot go out there and do those negative things. The only thing we can do is become the expressions of compassion. Where was Christ when the family in Gumri died? He was there with the first responders. He was there with the people who reached out. He was there with the priests who offered a hand. He was there with the people who offered a, uh, offered a hug. He is there in each and every one of our prayers. This is how Christ manifests himself. Because to talk about Christ manifesting is to talk about love being manifested. It's a difficult concept. It's not easy. The Armenian Church demands that we open ourselves up to that love. It's very easy to become critical and to cut down and to, to, to talk negatively. But what are we doing? And the one thing that we can do is become those ambassadors of love, the ambassadors of Christ. What happened in Gumri is one of those senseless tragedies that one day we may or may not learn why. That why will not change anything. What we can change is our response to it. Let's love. Let's become those ambassadors that share the love so that what love that we do have in our hearts will change the future, will speak to the present and change this future into a loving and more peaceful world that we all wish to attain. I leave you with these thoughts today and remind you in all things give praise and glory always to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.